Hello, fellow birders. My name is Dennis Kania. Today we're going to be talking about Harris's sparrows and where to look for them in our area. On the DuPage Birding Club Education Channel, we'll be discussing all things bird related. And as I mentioned, today we'll be talking about where to look for Harris's sparrow in our region. Let's start off with some data that's been collected at Fermilab, and you can see that our Harris's sparrow records all come from the months of October and the first half of November. And so um, you can see also by looking at these, you know, each one of these colors of the rainbow will represent one of our survey periods. And our Harris's records are becoming much more sparse in the more recent uh, survey periods. I also wanted to show you the um, data that we've collected on white crowned sparrows because that can be somewhat significant. And you can see that those birds start showing up in mid-September and we have them with us uh, in concentration during migration during October and November, but then they start to um, sl slow down in numbers in December and overwintering, uh, but they are present. Uh, and then they return again. In the springtime, we get a big influx of them towards the end of April and into May. But the significant part is to see the overlap that we see right here with uh, the big influx of white crowned sparrows that come in, in in the beginning of their fall migration. So that's the best time to look for Harris's sparrows. When we do see a large influx of white crowned sparrows, that seems to be when they show up. And so uh, keep an eye out for all those white crowns. And recent records span the entire county. We do have a lot of records that have come from Fermilab over the years, but there are also records on eBird that show that they've been at Elson's Hill, in the Morton Arboretum, Lyman Woods, and Green Valley Forest Preserve. But by far, I think the most reliable place has always been Fermilab. And unfortunately, Fermilab is closed at the moment. So, um, so that shuts down that avenue of searching. I wanted to uh, show you and just remind you of what white crown sparrows look like. Um, and here's the adult right here in alternate plumage. So this is what it's gonna look like in the breeding season. And it's a very distinctive head pattern, uh, very recognizable. And it does have that pink bill. And immatures or first basic plumages would also still have that pink bill. Uh, but you can see that the head patterning, even the, the pattern is somewhat the same, but the coloration is quite different, or it's more or less a dark brown on the crown. The um, supercilium is not a clean white like it is in the adults. In, in, case, in some cases, I've actually seen where it's buffier than what we see here. You can see a little bit of buff here in the cheek patch area. Um, clean on the breast, uh, very plain on the lower back with some dull streaking in the upper portions of the back, small or light uh, wing bars. <clears throat> now, if we compare that to our Harris's sparrow, you can see that the adult uh, is very, again, very recognizable, has a really strong black throat patch that extends down onto the upper breast and does continue on with some streaking. Uh, the front part of the crown is also very black, but again, it has that pink bill that you see on white crowned sparrows. <clears throat> Notice in this adult basic plumage, which is the non-breeding plumage, you can see the face is very, very buffy in color. If this was uh, in breeding plumage, this area would be very gray. So now let's look at the immature or first basic plumage. And you can see again, it has the very, very buffy face, just like the adult in uh, non-breeding plumage. It has the pink bill, just like the adult. And some of the um, crown will be darkish in color, uh, but you're lacking that black throat. If you do see the bird from the front, you will see that there is black uh, on the upper breast, which is in the form of a lot of streaking. But I want you to concentrate for a second on what the bird looks, for, looks like from behind. And it's very, very much like a uh, immature um, white crown sparrow. You can see that the lower back is very, very plain. It's dull streaking on the upper back and you have very um, light colored uh, wing bars, not very strong in pattern. So very, very similar again to pink bill. So a lot of features that carry over between white crowned sparrow and Harris's sparrow in those immature plumages. But again, a very, very buffy face is all buff, uh, not just you know, a little bit of buff in the supercilium or a little bit in the ear coverage here. This is an entire buff face and it will have streaking on the breast, which would be absolutely lacking in our uh, basic plumaged white crowned sparrow. So a great place to look for Harris's sparrows are your 
local community garden plots. And those are not birded very regularly, but I find that those are a great place to look for sparrows in the fall migration, especially those that have um, not been maintained very well. And a lot of weeds come up and the weeds you're looking for would be uh, this foxtail grass. That's something that's extremely uh, attractive to our sparrows as they're migrating. And it's a real magnet. Uh, a lot of the other weedy uh, plants that grow up are also um, plants that have an no overabundance of uh, seeds that they produce. And so all of that is very, very attractive to our uh, fall migrating sparrows. So that would be a good time or a good place to look for those. And this happens to be uh, garden plots at uh, in Naperville uh, off of West Street. And you can see that um, they've already been cleaned up for the year when I went out and, and took these pictures. There's still some debris on the ground. There still would be some seeds here. And there were in fact still some sparrows utilizing this because they did, uh, they do utilize the edges as well. But if you can get to garden plots before they get all cleaned up at the end of the year and you see vegetation like this still around, that's the best time to get in there and, and look for some of these uh, fall sparrows. So the key takeaways from all of this is that the best time to look for Harris's sparrows is in the fall. Um, and it's when we do see a large influx of white crown sparrows. So when those white crown sparrows just start showing up in good numbers, that's, that's the best time to be checking around for Harris's sparrow. And Harris's sparrow in first basic plumage could be easily overlooked. So remember to look carefully, make sure that you see some, um, check the breast out for some streaking and make sure that, um, all the other features are there. You, know, you want to see the, the pink build, you want to see the um, very buff facial pattern. Weedy garden plots at the end of the growing season can be a great place to look for many of our sparrows. So not only Harris's sparrows, but a lot of our other migrating sparrows. So thanks for taking the time to view this video. Hopefully we've given you some bird food for thought. And I hope that you'll join us again in the future as we explore all things bird related.